everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary from Mary Matthews Handmade and this is my crafty vlog number 35. I'm very well thank you so welcome back if you are returning if you are new to this channel then you are more than welcome my name is Mary I live in a very small cottage in West Sussex which is in the very southeast of England and these vlogs are just my way of letting you know what I've been up to so some of them are longer than others some of them are crafty than craftier sorry than others um, but you are more than welcome do introduce yourself in the comments down below. Now all my information is in the description box which is down below. Now if you don't know where to find that if you're watching me now it should be down I believe in this corner here you will see just a little arrow like this pointing down if you press that then you'll get all my information contact details all of my playlists on this channel so do go and have a look and also before we start do make sure that you're subscribed to this channel I am almost I believe 20 subscribers short of 2,000 so as soon as I have 2,000 subscribers there will be a nice giveaway so do make sure you click that red button is that this side as well or is that that side I don't know <laughs> but make sure you're subscribed. That's the paperwork out of the way. Anyway, if you were watching me last week, I was talking about these fabulous pumpkins. Now, I do know a lot of you, especially the crochet one, um, you're wanting to have a go at these this year. Maybe you ran out of time last year. Maybe my tutorial didn't come out in time for you, but there's plenty of time now. It's an ideal time, especially as the weather is quite warm still. Maybe you can make up a few. They're just a nice little project for you. Now, I'm going to be mentioning quite a few tutorials this week and I will list them in the description box below. I'll list them in the order that I talk to you about them. So um, all you've got to do is click on them and there you are. Also the fabric ones, I do like the fabric ones. Some of you are a little bit scared, you're not into your sewing, but believe me, there's not much sewing involved and what sewing there is involved is well hidden. So why not have a go if you've got some fabric maybe you've got some oddments left over or you've been given fabrics then it's an ideal time you could use them up to make fabulous pumpkins now last week I mentioned that a lot of the YouTube ladies that I'm watching they were doing Christmas in July but it was just way too warm for me to even think about that. So this week I'm going to give you a recap just in case you want to get organised. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how many G's there are in just that title there. So um, I've got a slightly different coloured one so <laughs> hopefully you can read that. Um, but we're going to get organised for Christmas. So I'm going to go through and have give you a recap of a few of the tutorials that I did last year. Um, also, in the next few weeks or so, I'll be coming up with some new tutorials. So these are the ones that are already out there. So as I say, I will list them down below. So number one, why not have a go at these super quick and easy granny stars. Now in the tutorial I tell you how to upsize them, make them smaller, you could string them together and make bunting or you can just have them hanging at the top and hang these on your tree. You can use them as tags for gifts. You can also, as I tell you in the tutorial, use them as coasters as well so you can make them larger have them on your Christmas table it's entirely up to you now I do use these all year round I've made them up in various colors I've attached them to just a card 
I've put in the bottom, you are a star, and I've sent them off to people. I've also, and I'll pop a picture in just here, I've also added a little name with some beads. So that's an idea, these lovely granny stars. Next up, these fabulous little pom-pom hats. Now these look great hanging from your tree. Again, I will tell you how to upsize them. A lot of the ladies last year made them larger and then um, covered a chocolate orange with these. Again, use them as tags. You could string them along, make a nice garland. Very, very easy to do. Once you know that pattern, you could again upsize that and make, make one large enough for a baby's hat. So idea three is for the Granny Stitch Christmas tree. Now unfortunately I don't have one here to show you at the moment but you can see in the picture they would make lovely Christmas decorations or again tags. Now the design is based on this lovely summer bunting here it's just the other way around so if you did have a go at the bunting you'll find that tutorial more than easy to follow although if you haven't had a go it is quite a simple one to follow so why not have a go at some Christmas trees number four the candy cane now again I don't have one of those to hand but it is based on this sort of, what do you call that? I call that whirly geek, design here. So I did speak about that last week. The tutorial for candy canes is so easy to follow. You're just making the two colors separately and then you're just going to merge them together. So I go through it. It was a very, very um, popular tutorial last year. So why not have a go? You can decorate your parcels and again, you can hang them on your tree. Now also as part of last year's Vlogmas, I showed you how to sew up your own Christmas stocking. So these were lined and padded and I showed you how to put that lovely brim on the top. Now this was under Vlogmas 2020 and that was day two. But as I say, I'm just going to pop the links down below. Now with Vlogmas, you will have a little bit of an intro um, and an extra on each of those, but you can just scroll through me talking nonsense. Just get to the tutorial. Okay, so that's day two for the Christmas stocking. Also on day four, I made those lovely jar covers. So this is an ideal way of using up scraps of fabric. I just show you how to make the cover and then you just tie on with a ribbon or some string or yarn, whatever you have. They make lovely little toppers for jars of sweets or whatever you want to give as gifts. So that's on day four of last year's Vlogmas. On day eight of Vlogmas last year, I showed you how to make up these fabulous storage hoops. Now you can see I've made pockets. So I did use my sewing machine, but you can just make one pocket so there'd be absolutely no sewing involved. You just need some fabric, a hoop and some glue. So as you can see, I've put my pens in mine. You could use these to store crochet hooks. You could hang these from a hook on the wall. Um, ideal for children's bedrooms maybe, you can make as many pockets as you like. So that's a wonderful idea. So that's story tubes and that was on day eight. Now on day 10, and as you can see, I'm still using mine now, even though you do have this Christmassy fabric, it's just houses, it's not that Christmassy. So I'm still using mine now. So I show you how to sew up 
these quick and easy pin cushions. So if you've got somebody that likes to sew, these make ideal little gifts. Now also very popular are these frilly coasters. So again, these are nice, quick and easy to make up. What you do, you can add a little candle and then give that as a gift. You can make these up in whatever colors. So they are good not only for Christmas, but all year round, nice and easy tutorial to follow. So that's our frilly coasters. And on day 16 of last year's Vlogmas, I showed you how to make fabric coasters. Now these are fully padded, so your table is protected. You can make them in sets of two or four or six or however many you want to make. You can make these all year round and use them on your coffee table. Tie them together with a ribbon and give them as a gift. So that's a nice idea if you've got lots of oddments of fabric to use up. Now also a very popular tutorial for these fantastic coin purses. Now I actually use this one. There's money in there and everything. So you just need to use these little coin clasps. Very easy, easy sorry, can't speak, a very easy tutorial to follow. Ideal again because they're nice and quick to make up. Ideal if you are doing your charity stalls, maybe stocking up for those Christmas fairs. So you can make them in all sorts of colours again all year round. Now this one is a proper autumnal or winter gift. You could start making these up now again, the nice quick and easy. I show you the technique so you get that lovely twisted knot at the front. You could add your own little tag if you wanted to. These again were very, very popular at the beginning of the year. I didn't make these before Christmas last year. I hadn't thought about the idea. Um, so I think this tutorial came out um, January or February of this year. Very, very popular. I ended up making loads of these um, to sell in my Etsy shop. So these are a good seller as well. And then finally on my list of ideas, how about making up some sets of face scrubbies, always very popular as gifts and very sellable. They're very quick and easy to make up, make them in those sets, tie them in a ribbon. Um, what I will also do over the next few weeks, I'm going to start showing you how to package your gift. So maybe making little boxes, how to size them so you can pop your face scrubbies in there and then tie the ribbon round. Little gift bags for you to put your handmade gifts in. Like I was telling you last week, it's ideal if you do have your um, stalls so that you're selling. It's nice if you can add a handmade gift bag as well. You don't have to have any special paper. You can recycle, recycle magazines. If you're giving crochet gifts, you could maybe um, make up some gift bags using old crochet magazine pages. I don't know. That's just something I'm going to be looking at over the next few weeks. So just some ideas for you. Phew! And we can breathe. I feel like I've just bombarded you with ideas. Also, remember, you can make little brooches. Um, so, <laughs> so, get cracking. It's always good. You will thank me for it come December. And you've made some packaging and you've made some gifts already. Um, you'll be thanking me for giving you those ideas in August. <laughs> Now, last week, if you've been waiting for me to show you the progress on my bag. Now, I did sew in the zip and I spoke about this 
last week so I sewed that zip in if I show you that side actually I don't know why I've still got a pin in there it's, it's all fully sewn in so you can't really see the stitches because I've used the same colour thread so I've just literally as neat as I can sewn the zip all the way around and then all you need to do is line it so as I said before I've made an inner lining and if you notice the right sides are still facing each other so the right sides are in here I've made an outer lining now this um, is the same on both sides but the outer is facing out so you can see my seams I've trimmed them off are facing inside and the idea is that you take your oops, outer lining and you put your inner lining inside so I'm just going to do that and I'll show you what that looks like so there you go I have my inner lining on the inside and then the outer lining on the outside now what you could do um, if you've still got your sewing machine out you could just sew around what I'm going to do when I sew it into my little pouch I'm just going to make sure that I'm catching both layers so when I'm sewing in just be very conscious that you're catching not only your crochet bag but both of these linings with each stitch so again I'm just going to pop this inside and I will show you what that looks like okay so what I've done literally is just pin part of that into place so you can see okay so you've got both layers you're going to need to make sure that you're catching both of those layers and you're catching the zip as well each time you stitch so this may take you a little while just be careful that you're getting all of those layers and you're as neat as possible going to sew all the way around and what I'll do next time is I'll show you how mine came out now I do think that I will use as the inner lining is predominantly black I'm going to use black thread now I don't want to go all the, all the way through so that you're going to see that on the other side I'm literally just attaching this fabric to the inside of the zip okay so I mean it would be a choice between the two wouldn't it because I've still got these creamy coloured flowers um, but I think I'll most probably do that in black but what I'll do is sew that in and next time I'll show you how I got on and what it looks like but from the outside this is what it's gonna look like so obviously you can't see that in a lining because I used the white but I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out so obviously once that's sewn in properly it'll look a little bit better but if you've had a go at making one of these once you've sewed your lining in do let me know how you've got on you could send me some pictures maybe so that is all from me this week now unfortunately next week I'm unable to vlog but what I will try really hard to make sure that I do is film the tutorial for this lovely cowl shawl whatever you want to call it I'm going to um, put the border on and then hopefully next week I'm going to be filming this so you should get this towards the end of that week okay so this is going to be a nice autumn again you could start making these for gifts but there will be no vlog next week unfortunately um, I have appointments that I just cannot miss um, but I will try as hard as I can to get this tutorial up for you I feel that August is a good time to start making those autumn gifts or as I've said today those Christmas gifts as well so I do hope that today I have inspired you to get organized now whatever it is that you are doing I do hope that you enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you here next time bye bye